Okay, today we're taking out two load-bearing walls. This one, and also this one here. Um, we're gonna be opening up this kitchen so it's a bigger kitchen. Um, it's gonna look and feel bigger because, you know, it's gonna be like an open concept from the living room. So, um, this water heater here will be removed and put outside, relocated. Um, but yeah, this wall's coming out. Um, it's all plaster, so it's a bit messier than if you were working with drywall, but it's going to get cut there and then also on this side of the door there. So all that's opening up and also this wall as well from right here to right here. So that whole wall. Um, now these walls are load bearing. I'm going to show you in a minute why and how to go about it. but. Uh, basically, we have to remove all this stuff off the walls, the plaster. We're going to leave the stud framing there until we build temporary walls on each side to support the ceiling choices before we remove the actual wall itself. Um, and then also, there's a lot of steps. Uh, well, you got to think about things like um, underneath puddings for your studs coming down which will be four by fours on each side of the post that we're putting up also you won't see this beam that we're putting up because it's going to be recessed into the ceiling so i'm going to show you how to go about that Okay, now that we got this, we're going to clean this all up and we're going to put two sure walls right here and another one right here because the joists are going this way, the ceiling joists, and both, we're going to be putting a recessed beam in here that's going to be up above the ceiling so, and you won't see the beam at all, so in order to do that, we got to cut all the ceiling joists, put the beam up them, and then we're going to put brackets attaching to the new joist and to the, the old uh, ceiling joists. I'll show you how it's done. But because we're cutting it open, we need to support the ceiling over here and we need to support the ceiling over here. So we're going to have a temporary wall and a temporary wall basically right here and here. All right, what I want to show you guys is how to determine if a wall is load bearing or not. So we're taking out these two walls, you know, I'm gonna go up there now and show you how you can tell. So going up here in the attic, um, first thing you notice is that these ceiling joists here are all running this way, okay? Now I'm gonna go back down just to show you where this wall is in perspective. So. The wall is along this wall, so it's going this way. So are these ceiling joists right here. You know, these ceiling joists are going the same way as that wall. So, you would think it's not a load-bearing wall. But if you look over here, way farther down there, I'll take you over there right now. They're actually, they go the other direction. So you gotta make sure that over the area that you're working just because these ones are going this direction doesn't mean the whole house is going that same direction but if we work our way down here okay so you see how these ones here are going this way but then all of a sudden it changes and now they're going this direction. And the wall we're taking out is right here. So um, this is definitely a load bearing wall because it's carrying the load of all these ceiling joists. So, and especially, oh, let me show you something here. The fact that you see how they come together right here. This is one, it ends. And this is one and it ends right here so basically 
it's carrying not only the load of these ceiling joists, but it's carrying the load right at where they join together. So that's how you know it's a load bearing wall. Now the other wall we're taking out is actually going this way, same way as the ceiling joists. But here's the thing. You see this kicker right here coming down from the ceiling, from the roof? This, our wall, <coughs> you see where these wires are going in? <coughs> That's how you know this double plate. The plate right here is that wall. So the these kickers are carrying the load of the whole roof here in this section down on top of that wall. So this wall is also load bearing. So those are two different things. You can also see this kicker here. It's actually not doing too much, but it's supposed to be carrying the load of the roof as well um, off of this wall. So what we'll be doing is putting in those beams, one here going along there and one going along here. And our temporary walls are gonna be ran all the way along right here and right here to support these ceiling joists um, while we're putting in the beam. And once we're done putting in the beam, we'll take that those two temporary walls out and I'll show you how that is. But um, yeah, and the other thing is to slide the beam up. So there's two ways to do it. Um, when removing a load bearing wall and you're putting your beam in, you can either have that beam exposed or you can recess the beam into the ceiling but if you're going to recess the beam into the ceiling, then you have to cut these ceiling joists all the way down. You know, what we'll do is snap a line. We're going to cut all those out so that the beam can actually come up above the ceiling. And then we're going to tie in brackets from the bottom here. And then the beam will be here. And the brackets will tie into the beam and to the existing joists on both sides all the way down so, so here's one of our temporary walls right here gave ourselves enough room to work between the wall we're taking out and our temporary wall and then the same over here to have our room to work right here be able to cut this ceiling out on both sides so we have one more stud we're gonna put right here and we're just uh, screwing them in here and up here to make sure that they don't come out or anything. Okay, so I cut with the grinder. I snapped the line with the chalk line and we cut a straight line there on both sides so that well, the reason we did it with the grinder and a chalk line is so that we can come back and pack it with drywall real easy. Just take our quick eight inch measurement and however long it is, and slap a piece on there. It'll be nice and easy. But, uh, but the reason we need to open it up is because we're gonna be recessing the beam up into the ceiling where you don't see it. So we're gonna need to cut all these ceiling joists on both sides. So we could put the beam up and then we're gonna put the brackets on. But this is how it's done. Right on, Nate. <laughs> okay, so we went ahead and cut all those ceiling joists. All the way down that way. And I'm about to go cut the beam and we're gonna go set it in there. And then down on the sides, it's gonna be four by fours, holding up the beam. The beam is a four by eight. And this isn't a very far run, so that'll be good. But if you got a farther run, you may want to, or more of a load on top of it, you may wanna use like a four by 12, something bigger than a four by eight, but this is a pretty short run, 10 feet. So that should be good. I also took this ball out. 
and we're going to be putting a beam up in here too but only for the kicker that goes up to the roof that's the only reason we're putting one in there all right so now that we have the beam up in there and we put on the brackets so that's what it looks like You have all these joist hangers on there and that will support them off of that beam or that beam will support the joist as I should say and all we need to do is put this 4x4 post here on this side we need to put a king stud and then our 4x4 jack stud on this side but we're going to do that tomorrow because Whenever you're putting in a load, or taking out a load bearing wall, you wanna make sure what's up in the attic, you wanna find out what weight is, is making the load on there. And then once you put your beam up, your, all your load goes down to the, the two sides, the four by four on each side. So that means underneath, this is a raised foundation, so, we need to make sure that we have support for this load on this side and on that side. And in this situation, they have support beams running about right here under our temporary wall and another one right here under this temporary wall pretty much. So there is no support beam under this wall where this wall was. So. What I'm gonna do is add a footing underneath right here. I'm gonna add a footing over on that side underneath so that all the weight from this beam is gonna be concentrated down here. From this seal plate underneath will be a footing. And same on this side. So. We're gonna continue on tomorrow because it's late. It's beer 30. See you guys tomorrow. All right, we're back today. We've already started working, did a few things. Put that electrical box right there in and been tightening up some things. It's going through, adding screws on each one of these. Also, to find where our footing's gonna have to be underneath the house, I drilled a hole right here and stuck this wire through there. We could pinpoint it. And then I put some cast, uh, precast concrete footings under there. And I'm about to cut out the four by four. Kind of hard to see under there, but I'll get you a look later. But I gotta cut some, uh, I got this pressure treated four by four right here. I'm gonna put on top of that precast concrete footing and then we'll have uh, some good structural support on each side. I'm gonna have one down there and one over here. I did the same thing here with this wire, bed it down there and then I could pinpoint where it was. Okay. Oh. So here's the footing. I crawled all the way back under here with the GoPro so you guys could see this. So, hit that subscribe button. But anyways, this is the footing I just put in. All right, and then pressure treated four by four. And what happened was where that wire was coming down it was right here. So what I did is I just notched it around that there and uh that way we're center with right where the four by four up above is coming down so it just basically continues on down to here to the ground so i did the same thing right there so that one is the exact same except it's not notched out it just goes right bef right beside that joist over there and uh also want to make sure you use the um, the right kind of screws for this 
which is uh, forgetting the name of right now at the moment, but also put two screws. Well, I put two screws right there just to keep this board from moving or anything. And uh, same on that one. So. Oh, this, oh, the name of the screws are the, they're Stimson. They're made for Stimson strong ties. So if you just use like deck screws like these, you're not, you're not supposed to because they could break, I guess. They're, um, the steel that they use isn't made for the type of tension that's put on, on this. So they say you're supposed to always use that brand of screws for those. Anyways, so I'm gonna work my way out of here and go on up above. So that footing is directly below right here. So now we can put our four by four post in and drop these temporary walls. And four by four post over here. All right, so we got in both the beams. This is this one for this side. Here's the four by four. But we sandwiched it between these two by fours just because we wanted it to come out here. This is where we want our finished wall to be. So, there's that. We also use these lag bolts here. Take these lag bolts. To anchor those four by fours. To anchor this four by four through. Like that. You see these lag bolts? And also, right here going this way. So, we got that by four on there. We're just gonna cut this steel plate here and take that off. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. We got our temporary walls down. Just getting that drywall back in. Got that drywall up. Things are looking pretty nice. But that's how you take out a load-bearing wall. Mm -hmm. 